Well, another key Saints player added to the injury report today as the black and gold start to chip away at a long list of miscues from their season opener, preseason opener. Lions Yon has more from West Virginia. The Saints return to the practice field this afternoon for the first time since dropping the preseason opener at Baltimore on Thursday evening. The two hour and 15 minute practice was one of the longest they've had at the Greenbrier so far and for good reason. Sean Payton said after reviewing the film, the Saints have a lot to clean up. The very first thing I wrote it down here, we were minus, we we're plus two in the turnover takeaway market, but we were minus 211 yards in hidden yardage. So if you're calculating yards, like we typically do, you know, you're off the field on third down, but there's a penalty, then yards made after that penalty is hidden yardage. Uh, offensively, you make a first down, but it comes back. So there's ways to calculate that. Uh, that's, a, that's a real high number. All those things we have to clean up, though. And look, while that was happening offensively, we weren't really generating much momentum. So it got better as the game went on, um, but we, we couldn't get off the field on a few third downs. And then off offensively, uh, we came up short on a third and one. Um, so there's a handful of things. I mean, you, you saw some real good performances. I thought Murphy returned the ball exceptionally well. Um, Swan had a couple holding calls, but nonetheless made a few good plays in the secondary that were that was encouraging. Um, I thought Max Unger in his first game did some really good things. A few practice notes, defensive lineman Akeem Hicks and cornerback P.J. Williams both returned to practice today after missing the game and several practices earlier in the week. Now, Williams, he was working with the ones as the Saints are down several cornerbacks. Brandon Browner and Delvin Bro both were injured in Baltimore and were absent today, as were Anthony Spencer and Danelle Ellerby. The most concerning news has to be about C.J. Spiller, though. According to multiple reports, he had arthroscopic knee surgery over the weekend and won't return until week one at the earliest. Now, as per his usual, Sean Payton declined to comment on all the injuries. Now, the Saints return to the practice field tomorrow morning at their regular schedule. <laughs> Reporting from the Greenbrier, Lions Yellen, Eyewitness Sports. Thanks so much, Lions. Here's a look at the Saints' upcoming schedule. They have morning practice with afternoon walkthroughs Sunday and Monday. Tuesday's another off day. Wednesday and Thursday, the Patriots are in West Virginia for two days of joint practices with the Saints. Both workouts will get underway at 9.30 a.m. Friday, the teams travel to New Orleans for Saturday night's second preseason matchup. Kickoff at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome is set for 6.30. Well, the Saints have had such a positive experience at the Greenbrier the past two years that the Pelicans are following suit. The team announced today that they'll hold their training camp in West Virginia from September 29th through October 2nd. It's the first time the Pels have moved camp outside of New Orleans since 2009. Well, NFC South foe Tampa Bay facing Minnesota tonight in preseason action. And number one pick Jameis Winston's debut was nothing to write home about. Winston only played the first half, finished 9 of 19 passing for 131 yards and one interception, leading a touchdown drive and a field goal drive. He was sacked twice. Welcome to the NFL. The Vikings beat the Bucks 26 to 16. We'll still head in sports. The LSU Tigers need their sleep, we'll explain. Plus, moving day at the PGA Championship and a former Lion roaring in the big leagues. Highlights coming your way after the break. LSU scrimmaged under the lights at Tiger Stadium tonight. It was closed to the public and the media. Only parents were allowed. The first of three scrimmages was originally set for 11:15 this morning, but Les Miles moved it to let the players sleep in. They have someone on the staff who recommended it. We have a sleep doctor, uh, Dr. Thomas, and he comes in and he kind of schools us on the benefits of rest. Who knew? So many resources at the Tigers' disposal. Tomorrow's media day, fan day for LSU. We'll have a full report on fourth down on four for you. Well, it was moving day at Whistling Straits, and the fight for golf's fourth major was pretty unbelievable. Martin Keimer, who won the championship in 2010, nails the 45-foot birdie putt on 17 to move to 11 under. He shot a 65 today. Seven birdies, no bogeys, right in the thick of things. On 14, Jason Day looking for back-to-back -back birdies, and he gets it to move to 16 under, giving him a two-stroke lead. Now, Jordan Spieth trying to become just the third player to win three majors in the same year and the first player ever to win all three majors on American soil. 
Spieth finishes off his round with six birdies over the last eight holes. No blemishes on the day. His 65 puts him at 13 under, clearly a fan favorite in Wisconsin. Day double bogeyed 15, but bounces back with a birdie on 17 in the hunt for his first major title. Day has two stroke lead at 15 under. Brandon Grace shot a 64 today to jump up the leaderboard. He's currently tied with Justin Rose at 12 under. Matt Jones had a two stroke lead at one point, but finished the round with two bogeys and a double bogey. Yikes. Red Sox Mariners earlier today, former Southeastern Lion Wade Miley pitching for the Red Sox. First inning gets Nelson Cruz swinging for the fences here to end the frame. Check out the mustache. Pretty sweet. Miley getting plenty of help. Bottom of the second, Pablo Sandoval with the long ball over the center field wall. One of two home runs and five runs the Red Sox put up in the inning alone. King Felix outing didn't last very long. Back to Miley, though. He gave up just two runs, both in the third. Had a solid day in seven innings of work. Miley struck out eight, walked three, earning his ninth win of the season, his first since July 7th as Boston bounces Seattle 22 to 10. You know, I went to school in Boston for college, and I'm a Red Sox person. Well, that's okay. You can be a Red Sox fan. Today. Especially with my pitching forum. Today. We'll be right back. <laughs>